this is Frank and today I want to talk to you about the Control Line Electric Super Clown ARF made by Brodak Manufacturing Company. Specifically, I want to talk about a defect with regard to its firewall. Now I don't ordinarily make videos like this, but I thought this was important because number one, there is a real safety issue with this. You could or somebody could be seriously injured if this problem is not corrected. Secondly, the kit will run you about a little over $100, $109, something like that. And if you buy all the other equipment from them, like the motor, the speed controller, the timer, and a couple of batteries, you're going to wind up spending close to $300. And what you're going to end up with is something that's defective, at least in my opinion. So what I'm going to cover today is first how I went about building it and then how it failed and why it failed. I'll show you specifically what went wrong. And then I'm going to go over a little bit of the history of the defect because this problem has been known for quite some time and there has been an attempt to correct it. And then I'm going to show you what I did to correct it. And then finally I'll finish up with my opinion and then let you draw your own conclusions. So let's get started. So being an ARF, the fuselage comes already built. You really just need to slide the wing through it, mount the tail feathers, and then mount all your other equipment like your motor, speed controller, and so on. Now the way the motor mounts, there is a ringed shaped firewall in the front of the fuselage with a hole in the middle. The motor actually mounts from behind that firewall with the shaft extending through the hole. Here's a picture of the firewall. Now separately packed within the kit is a cowl with instructions. The instructions read as follows. In our continuing quest to improve our products, we have designed a better way to mount your electric motor and controls. Nowhere within these instructions does it indicate that this fiberglass cowl may play a critical role in structural integrity. You know, it looks like any other cowl, like it's basically there for cosmetic reasons. It'll help cover up part of the exposed motor and basically make the front end of the plane look more streamlined. The instructions tell you to trim off the covering on the side, I think perhaps the top and bottom, although I think they just mentioned the side, and then to glue or epoxy the cowl onto the side. Then the, the cowl, uh, the, you'll drill three holes in the front of the cowl to match the holes in the motor and then your mounting bolts will pass through the front of the cowl and into the motor and secure the whole thing in place. So the cowl didn't even come close to fitting. So I decided to forego the, the cowl. Um, it's cosmetic appeal only and I decided, uh, you know, I'll let that go. So I completed the plane, took it out in the backyard, fired up the motor, and within five seconds or so of it coming up to full speed, the firewall ripped out. The motor kind of wrapped underneath the plane, and as it did so, fortunately, one of the connectors between the motor and the speed controller broke free, and the motor shut down. Otherwise, it could have caused a lot of damage to the plane, to my hand, it could have thrown parts up into my face. So at this point, I'm pretty upset with the whole thing. But I brought it all into the workshop and decided to start looking at what went wrong and what I needed to do to correct it. And here's what I found. This was all that was holding that firewall on. If you look at the right hand side, I drew a couple of pencil marks on there so that you could actually see where the wood was because a lot of that is glue that oozed out. Um, so on the right hand side, that's about a sixteenth of an inch of wood. The thickest piece is down at the bottom and that measured just about an eighth of an inch. So that was all that there was to hold the firewall on. I did some research to see if anybody else had reported a similar problem 
and I found a post in RC, I think it was RC Groups, but I'll post the link in the description below. But I found a post from 2007 where somebody else reported a similar problem in a, in a kit review. And the person that designed this plane for Brodak Manufacturing came back and said, it, unfortunately, it wasn't the first incident that he had heard of. And that in his original design, he had fiberglass the outside and inside of this area and never had a failure. And that's what he submitted to Brodac. However, these kits are built in China. And the Chinese manufacturer did not have the ability to do the fiberglassing. So they elected to not bother with it. And they produced several hundred kits, apparently, with this problem. At some point, however, when they noticed that there were failures, the solution, and in my opinion is a band-aid solution, was to come out with the fiberglass cow. And for a while they weren't even putting that in the box. Eventually they did start adding it, but they didn't indicate that it was a fix to a problem. So it really it just appears that it's a, a cosmetic additive. So here's how I went about addressing this problem. The idea was to cut off some of the front of the fuselage so that I could get back to a more beefier area where there was more wood uh, uh, that I could glue to. So if you look and hit this picture closely, about five sixteenths of an inch back, I drew a line there. And then I sawed that off at that point. So this is the section that I cut off. That provided some additional surface area, but in order to get more, I built up the outside. So you can see in this shot, there's some pieces of eighth inch laid on that flat section on the top and then I wrapped sixteenth inch sheet around the sides there and then to bring it up to the eighth inch I took another piece of sixteenth and wrapped that around on top so that should be visible in the shot coming up here so you can see in this shot that we do have additional surface area here now that we can glue to. But I decided to get even more by scribing the inside the, uh, area there and then creating this additional piece that would glue on the inside and then the firewall could glue right onto that. Now this piece is going to be necessary anyway and let me explain why. So notice how the wires exit the end of the motor here. They don't really have enough, there's not enough clearance for them to lay down flat so that if you were to mount this, to try and mount it flush up against that firewall, you would be crushing those wires. So originally I made this piece that you see on here just to space the motor back and give the wire some relief. So this is going to be needed anyway, so my, why not make that piece functional and give us some additional gluing area. So that's what you see here. Now we have additional area to glue the firewall to the front of the airplane. Here's what it looks like when it was all finished up. I just want to take this time to mention now that there was no offset built into the original design. So I took the time when doing this refit to build in about two degrees of offset. And then finally, for additional strength, the whole front end was fiberglassed. Here is a clip of the finished product. Just let me say uh, it is not the intention of this video to knock the Brodak company. In fact, 
I'm grateful for them. They have kept Control Line flying alive. They offer many great kits and products, and they host outstanding events. Personally, I flew Control Line models when I was a kid, and 50 years later, I'm getting back into it. Many of the models I flew as a kid are available still through Brodac. So my intention here is simply to make you aware of a potential safety issue with this particular kit and to help you avoid what I experienced. So here are my thoughts. When you buy an almost ready to fly kit, your intention is usually because you want to get something in the air quickly. So you're willing to spend more to get a, a model that's partially or mostly built. Now if I had this to do over again, I would buy the ARF with the intention of spending the extra time to rebuild the front end as you saw in this video. If I wasn't in a hurry, I would buy the glow engine version of this kit and redesign the fuselage to accommodate the electric motor. Personally, I wouldn't trust the fiberglass cowl provided to do the job. But at a very absolute minimum, I would suggest that you do that and you um, actually epoxy it and bolt it as they show in the uh, instructions and don't think of it as a cosmetic addition because it's actually their way of strengthening the front end. I personally just wouldn't trust it. I mean, if you look at the, at the glow engine version, I think they recommend a 19 to a 35 motor. And you have seen how much wood is actually holding or attached to that firewall. So I'm assuming the electric motor is the equivalent of something between a 19 and a 35. So would you put a glow engine rated like that on the front end of something designed like that? Well, that's your call to make. Um, I presented it to you. I'll let you draw your own conclusions. So um, I hope you found this educational and thanks for watching. Hey, one more thing. Before posting this to YouTube, I came across another YouTube video where a modeler built this kit the same way I did, basically. And his video shows the motor separating from the plane during flight. And he also has another video showing you how he went about fixing the problem. I'll include the link to that in the text below. Thanks. Bye.